Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans, and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES. Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES-TV. Welcome to Step It Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hello, Peg. Hello. And Judith Bonner, senior curator for the historic New Orleans collection. Hey, Miss Judith. Hello. Hello. Hi. David Clemmer, filmmaker and son of artist John Clemmer. Judith and hey, Judith and David will discuss the current exhibit spotlighting the career of David's dad, the noted New Orleans artist John Clemmer. And Greg Lambusi, director of the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Lots going on there. Hey, Greg, it's good to have you back. Thanks. And of course, Alan Smason of theatercriticism.com <laughs> and the Crescent City Jewish News. Howdy. Hey. Poppy, one local restaurant is ready to share its recipes, and you have played a part in that effort. Well, Peggy, you have played a part in this <laughs> effort, too, because you won't believe this, but the Tony Mandina's Kitchen started in Colette Mandina, Tony's daughter's mind, and about a year ago now, Leighton Cerevolo, who is a longtime customer at Tony Mandina's and a longtime viewer of <laughs> Steppin' Out, told Colette to call me if, he, if she wanted Aww. a book. And so here it is. November 15th begins Tony Mandina's 40th year. And of course, we are talking about a Gretna landmark, 40 years in Gretna, serving perhaps the most delicious Sicilian style food in the city. Just incredible. Things like osabuco, their veal piccata has lump crab meat. Look at that osabuco. Mm. Mm. And these are from the book. And the veal piccata um, has incredible lump crab meat on top. Just check that out. They have bragioloni. They have meatballs. Oh. Yeah, I know. You don't see that on the menu no, today, you don't. In, but it is on their menu. They may have the best calamari and fried eggplant that I have ever tasted. So, Colette Mandina is such an amazing businesswoman. She's got a new book, but she also imports wine from Salaperuta, where they have seven generations of family going back, and olive oil also. Now, there are Grace and Tony Mandina at their famous table, 41. So, Lindsay, who is Colette's daughter, Lindsay Marcel, and Colette, they are co-proprietors now. They acquired the restaurant in early 2020, basically, so that Grace and Tony could retire, which they promptly did, to table 41. <laughs> They're there every single Aww. service, lunch and Aww. dinner. At Tony Mandina's, they have lunch Tuesday through Friday, and dinner only on Friday and Saturday nights, close Sunday and Monday. The first book signing of the new book is going to take place this Saturday night from 5 until 9 p.m. at the restaurant. And I'll tell you what, the recipes in this book are simply amazing. Um, Colette just would send them to me, and I'd put them in recipe form, <laughs> and they're incredible. The 
almond cookies from Cousin Beatrice in Salaparuta. You've never lived until Thank you've you. had one. Well, of course, the, we urge you to buy it from there, but also eventually, hopefully, there'll be a little bit of a larger distribution, even though I know there's a limited publication. There's a, li it. so it's a limited Amazon publication maybe for the fall. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. And moving over to uh, Judith and David, and Judith, John Clemmer, bohemian, uh, teacher, artist on his own right, there's so much to say. What is his role in the more recent New Orleans art legacy? Well, that's one of the things that we are looking at right now is to see just exactly where he, he fits in all that picture. And I think that the exhibition that we have on view um, really demonstrates where he fit. Uh, he was singular in his voice after he got to that certain point where he worked through uh, Cubism. Uh, it was surprising he could go anywhere and do anything, and he uh, varied what he was doing. And um, he just left a, a tremendous legacy of his work. Now, we're talking about, a, what, a 75-year career? A 75-year career. From the 40s to the 90s plus, you From know. 1935 to 2014. Oh, my so goodness. it was 75 yeah. years. What I also love, and it's called Clemmer Circle, is that there were so many uh, artists, of course, that he inspired and that he taught. And so you all have, in effect, dual exhibits about both uh, John Clemmer himself, but also many of the artists who were inspired by him. Even, I know, the Calandrias, Walker and Chalice Calandria, there's work by them as well. The list is pretty long, isn't it? <laughs> it is pretty long. Um, yeah. Yes, there are 76 artists who are represented in that circle, and those include his teachers as well as his students Incredible. and his friends. Yes. Um, now, now, David, I know you were certainly integral in, in, in assisting and working with this exhibit, but I know you also spent a lot of time on uh, really a labor of love, a documentary, really um, going around and following your dad in, in his own words. Could you set up, we're going to show a clip mm -hmm. from this almost half hour documentary, set up what we're about to see. Sure. Uh, the film was made uh, from fall of last year through spring of this year, and the main source for the narrative are recordings that I made of my father uh, in this very room that I'm sitting in Black River, Wisconsin, back in 1998. Mm -hmm. And uh, they provide the narrative for the film, and one of the uh, most important things that happened in my dad's life in terms of his artistic development was his involvement with the Arts and Crafts Club of New Orleans and its associated art school. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad uh, got a scholarship uh, when he was a student at Forche uh, High School, mm -hmm. and that allowed him to go and study at the Arts and Crafts Club's uh, school, its art okay. school. Well, and of course, uh, and Judith is a great... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was just going to yeah, say Judith that is a he, great historian of all this. Well, that is for sure. But also, eventually, he ran it. And so let us take a look uh, at an excerpt from this wonderful tribute uh, that David did to his dad. I came back to New Orleans. Arts and Crafts Club was still in existence then. Anyway, I ended up running it as executive secretary and, and ran the school which was on the second floor. I lived on the top floor. This is on the corner of Pirates Alley and Royal. I was making the big sum of $100 a month running the Arts and Crafts Club. You know, I was living on the top floor, and people were aware of the fact that I was living in sin. And Lisa, she was sort of a dancer. She also modeled. She was a good model. We got married. My benefactor in the gallery then was Nancy Rathburn. She was a great lady, extremely wealthy. And she took on the Arts and Crafts Club sort of as a, I don't know, as a hobby, I guess. 
Okay, and thank goodness for Nancy Rathborn because, of course, she was such a strong supporter. And you can see the entire documentary that David did. It's on YouTube. And, David, it's generous of you to share that. We're going to come back to David and Judith in just a minute. But now let's move over to Greg. And, my goodness, Greg, it's hard to believe it's the ninth annual it's hard to NOLA believe. Yeah. River Fest. <laughs> it is. And it is music and food and tours, but especially music on Saturday, right? Yes, tons of, tons of music. So we'll start off with, uh, actually with uh, Luther Gray, and he's going to be doing a drum circle starting around 10, or 10 o'clock or so in the morning out on the grass on our uh, lawn. And then um, Tremé Lafitte will uh, um, start off in Jackson Square, mm -hmm. and we'll go around um, along the river down French Marketplace. With the to, baby uh, dolls, huh? With, uh, yes, with baby with the, dolls. Yes, with Kit, with Kit uh, Harrison, the Nolan Stallings baby dolls. <laughs> and, uh, and also I should put a shout out to... Uh, Mary Kay, Mary Kay Stevenson, um, 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 big queen yeah. Mary Kay Stevenson of the uh, Wall Chop of Tulis, and now she'll still be with us. Yeah, and now this year you also have a little bit of a Caribbean theme going as well, don't you? We do, yeah. So Casa Samba will be with us as well as her dancers, and that'll uh, take place around 4 o'clock. Um, we'll also have Greyhawk Perkins. Uh, as you see there, Miss Linda uh, Green will, will have her Yaka Main. Um, um, 504 Street and Soul, that's uh, Brandy uh, Bridgewater, great chef. Mm -hmm. There's Bo Dallas uh, in, in the Wild Magnolias. Um, Bo just uh, recorded an album with us on our new uh, record label, Gallatin Street Records, and I believe I've heard he's nominated for uh, uh, for, for a Grammy this year. Oh, that's wonderful. And I love the fact that you've chosen the name Gallatin Street because that indeed that, yes. was the street and now we think of it as French Market Street, but that was the infamous, the street yes, of ill repute right infamous. behind the mint. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So anyway, let's talk some more. We'll come back to you in just a minute because right. also you've got tours as well. Yes. So, that, so we'll, we'll be right back on that. And let's go over to Alan. Alan, some scary theater, huh? Well, yeah, we've had, <laughs> sort of. uh, you know, we've had sort of an in-between period period uh, where we hadn't had any openings and all of a sudden now we have a spate of new shows about to bow on the scene and cautiously optimistically we are considering returning to theater with our face mask on and of course our vaccination cards in hand. First of all, Leslie Caste is directing a new version of The Adams Family starring Enrico Canella and Callie Russell as Gomez and Morticia Adams. This is the third time I'll be seeing this show, the first being the national tour that launched from the Sanger and the last time when Rivertown Theaters presented it six years ago. This will also mark the return to the stage of Christopher Ventavenia of See Him on Stage Page, famous uh, Uncle Fester, and the First Lady of the New Orleans stage will also be on hand, Janet Shea, as Grandma Adams. The Adams Family plays at East Jefferson High School while the Jefferson Performing Arts Center is being repaired. Last week, the NOLA Project announced the first time a co-artistic director in the form of the lovely, the talented, and the geeky Brittany Williams will be uh, the co-artistic director. Brittany is the reigning stage door idol. She was featured in the NOLA Project's Harry and the Thief and Spirit Mission One, but she's also a published author for her part in a recent Star Wars series of short stories titled, From a Certain Point of View, The Empire Strikes Back. She is the playwright of Tell It To Me Sweet. That's the latest NOLA project work to be presented in the now expanded Sydney and Walda Bestoff Sculpture Garden. Audience members will move from one section of the play to another. There are five. They all have five little short walks, all accessible. You will not need chairs for this one. And uh, so check it all out. It's going to be from October the 30th to November the 14th, different times, different dates, uh, and hopefully rain dates if they happen to unfortunately have any rain. Meanwhile, the National World War II Museum can't wait to reopen its doors again. And here's Tom Hook. He is one of the two people putting on a tribute to the life of Louis Armstrong, shepherded by music director Tom Hook, also uh, another jazz practitioner who will portray Louis Armstrong with the reverence that it deserves, Wendell Brunius. They'll be with us next week, and, by the way. And, uh, and again, yeah. I have to tell you, they, they are going to be doing this. This is an original production that they're doing. They created it themselves. They conceived it, wrote it together. Tom, of course, famously played another Louis, Louis Prima, the Jump, Jive, and Whale uh, uh, tribute, uh, one of their more popular pieces. The show runs through November the 7th. Make plans to check that one out soon. And uh, again, opening tomorrow night, finally, uh, Peg, will be a short run of two weekends for the University of New Orleans Film and Theater Department's production of Who Do Love? Mm -hmm. This is uh, billed as a story about voodoo love potions, and it's uh, written by Pulitzer Prize winner <laughs> Katori Hall, who wrote The Mountaintop. Check it out. This will be the first play I will have attended at the Robert Nims Theater in some time since the pandemic.
Okay, thank you so much. And back to Poppy with a fundraiser for a very worthy cause. Lots of goings on now, thank goodness. So we're going to start with Liberty's Kitchen, which has been doing good deeds since 2008. Of course, they work with young adults who have been neglected or criminalized with job training, opportunities, a support system. They've changed over a thousand lives. Their annual fundraiser, Come Grow With Us, is November the 5th. Tickets start at $150. It's at the Ace Hotel, but sponsorship levels are available and needed. So just go to libertyskitchen.org. And then the National Fried Chicken Festival Week is happening. They promise it'll be in person next year, but now through the 24th, there are 19 different locations that you can go to for everything from fried chicken to sweets. Just go to their website, friedchickenfestival.com, to learn more about that one. And the big news, in person at Lafreniere Park, new location, Top Taco is back. Next Thursday evening, I, there are over 42 different restaurants competing, and all of the best chefs show up to show off there. Shane Finkelstein, who, of course, is the founder, um, it benefits Please Foundation, and that's a nonprofit that mentors and gives out college scholarships. They already had people enrolled at Tulane, and Shane said, I got to do it. I got to help them out. So it's happening next Thursday. All I'll right. see you there. Okay. Thank you so much. And back to Judith, just to kind of really uh, just be amazed, if you will, at the versatility of John Clemmer, uh, you know, in terms of not only line drawing, sculpture, the three-dimensional quality of many of his works of art, and, and also, of course, uh, beautiful portraits. And we're going to show some when, when, uh, as you're talking. But did he have any particularly favorite topic, Judith, or was he just across the board? Well, I think that um, he's generally considered an abstract artist, but he varied back and forth. He uh, would do the abstract works, and then he would uh, look at either a portrait or still life or something that was representational in some way. But that often was characterized by abstract sh shades as well. For instance, this nude with still life, you have to really look hard to figure out where is that still life. Um, <laughs> so he was just very versatile in the sorts of things that he was able to do and um, continued to, to try different things and to experiment and explore as much as he could by way of subject as well as media. Well, you know, the sort of the uh, his amazing path, though, because he starts off, you know, as, of course, an artist and then a teacher at the Arts and Crafts Club, as we said. But then he has an opportunity to go to Tulane and within the architecture school and eventually becomes the head of the art school. I mean, that is quite the, the meteoric rise, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, yes, he was the only person who was a student, a teacher, and... Uh, the director of the uh, New Orleans Art School at the Arts and Crafts Club. So after that closed, then he went over to Tulane in 1951, and he was on the faculty there until 1976 when he went to Newcomb. Yeah. And we have got to mention this beautiful, you know, to learn more, of course, about John Clemmer, this beautiful new book that the Historic New Orleans Collection published that is, of course, available and contributing and putting this together, uh, of course, was Judith and, uh, and also David worked on it as well. And John Ed Bradley, the novelist, who it turns out knew um, the Clemmers uh, very, very well. But uh, just, just the beauty of it all is just, is just incredible to me and the versatility I'm all, and to live until his 90s and still work. David, what do you think gave him the most satisfaction in terms of different art, you know, aspects of his art? Uh, as Judith said, I think that he considered himself to be a modernist and an abstract painter first and foremost. I think that was the core of what he did. But he did so many other things. Uh, I think he was very much... Uh, uh, of the idea that he shouldn't be pinned down to, to be one type of an artist. He was just an artist. And I think that he was very committed to that idea throughout his life. Uh, now, did you um, hang around a lot with him at the studio? Did he mind that you would spend time with him? Or did he say, oh, I, have to, I need my own space? Tell me about that. No, he actually liked having people around. Uh, his, his studio kind of was both a, a sanctuary for him. It was the place.
places that he went to think and to work and to listen to classical music. And uh, he did like to have folks around. He would very often have visitors come by the studio and sit and talk to him while he worked. So he was sort of a social artist in that way. He actually enjoyed it. Very good. Well, wonderful. Well, once again, we you know we can't recommend highly enough, of course, both the exhibit um, now at the Historic New Orleans Collection until November the 7th. And this is at the collection, as you know, is a series of many buildings, but 520 Royal, the old WDSU, on the third floor. And it's quite a large exhibit, isn't it, Judith? It certainly is. Uh, we've got 77 works by the wow. artist in the circle and 62 works by John Clemmer. So it is extensive, it's beautifully installed, and uh, it's the sort of place where you just don't want to leave once you're <laughs> once you're there. Well, for more details, of course, uh, hnoc.org. But um, And don't forget to take a look at, of course, David's uh, really wonderful documentary. Uh, it's great to have you both with us. And moving back over to Greg. And Greg, um, you know, more music. And we'll talk about, we'll be showing you some of the other, uh, you know, mu uh, musicians. But you've also got some tours in conjunction with the Riverfest. We and, do. And also some virtual talks, too. We do, we do. So we have uh, Water Collaborative. Is, who's a um, partner in all of this. They're going to start a tour at 9 o'clock in the morning, 400 Esplanade, um, front of the Jazz Museum, the old U.S. Mint. Um, um, and those will begin. They'll go along the river. It's a wonderful tour, and it's really about the history of, ri history of the river, influence of the river. And that, that tour will then intersect with the second line that'll show up at the museum around noon. Mm -hmm. And some is going to be there during the day. This is an entire day of music, of He course. will be. He, yeah. He's going to emcee the day. And then yeah. there's Greyhawk Gains Perkins. Greyhawk. His, his band's going to perform. And then right after the band ends at 1 o'clock, he will be uh, giving a talk, um, mm -hmm. or actually doing some storytelling on our Chi-Chi Millman stage. Yeah, and of course, as you said, the Treme Lafitte Brass Band. Now, also, later in the week, not just that Saturday, there will be those some free online lectures. And I know that uh, Kevin Caffrey has a new documentary about the Mississippi. That's one of them, isn't he, it? He does, and we're going to show that. We're going to show that um, the full lineup for the uh, both the, the uh, in-person festival, which will all be all outside on our grounds, and the... Um, and the um, lectures, films, et cetera, are on our website at nolajazzmuseum.org. And I should mention, there's a really uh, fun one with uh, Clemal Rum from Martinique. It's a really wonderful rum. They're going to have a tasting um, at the festival and then uh, do a talk about the history of the rum itself. And we should remind everybody there are lots of great exhibits at the Mint, including the Michelopolis, the artist James Michelopolis, who, of course, has done many jazz fest posters and uh, incredible renditions of New Orleans homes. If you don't know Michelopolis, you're, right. you're missing out. Exactly. Um, and they're um, a along with uh, the Louis Prima exhibit. Yes. So there are many reasons, yes. in addition to, of course, yes. the Saturday to it, come. And Emily Reese's exhibit as well, yes. Yes, yes. yes. With yes. no, his, her, her dad, Noel Rockmore, yes, yes indeed. Right. Yes. So once again, Nola River Fest, but also you can go to the Louisiana State Museum website as yes. well, yes. New Orleans Jazz Museum. Yes. All right, great, thank you. And back thank over you. to Alan. Well, Peggy, you know, this past Monday night, we paid homage to New Orleanian Jim O'Quinn, the founding editor-in-chief of American Theater Magazine. Uh, on hand were a number of his friends and colleagues, Rob Weinert, Kleint, who uh, was the, uh, uh, I guess you might say, the recipient. He is the current editor-in-chief of American Theatre Magazine. But also on hand, his former managing editor, Todd London, Philip Arnold of the Center for uh, International Theatre, spoke glowingly of Jim's ability to travel. Uh, so, we, you know, we wanted to make mention of the fact that he was there. Kathy Randalls, Justin Maxwell, M.K. Wegman, a lot of New Orleanians came out to cheer uh, his memory. And, and again, uh, it was his transcendent spirit and love of theater. Meanwhile, taking my cue from stepping out, Yes, Tom Hook and Wendell Brunius will be my uh, show guests coming up on uh, the NOLA Theater Talk Show. Again, you can check that out uh, at the various places that we have it on Facebook and on YouTube. And then after they're finished, Bina Sharif, a uh, Afghan woman actor, uh, will be on the show to talk about her life. Life is a... Um, one Act Play is the name of her show, which recently played to great reviews in New York. She'll be bringing the show to the Zeitgeist Theater in November. So check it all out on the NOLA Theater Talk Show that you can see there, uh, and you'll see uh, Bina on, at 8.30. Um, now, while some of you won't know the name of Erica Henningsen, those who do uh, know that uh, she was uh, one of the mean girls. She played uh, Katie Heron, the out-of-place girl who infiltrates the plastics. Uh, Erica's also played in Le Miserable as Fontaine, and she's starring in the series now Girls 5 Eva. 
She will be Seth Rudetsky's guest coming up this Sunday on the Seth Concert Series. Next week, we'll have Shoshana Bean of Wicked and Waitress fame. So uh, they'll be on hand there to belt along with Seth. And uh, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing both of them. All right, thank you so much. And now it's time for our picks of the week. Poppy. If you're still looking for some Halloween fun, on the Friday before Halloween, the 29th, the Tujac's Witches Luncheon has seats available. Three courses for $38. It's going to be great fun. And go and get your reservations for Thanksgiving if you're planning on going this year. A good idea. Judith. Yes, um, well, remembering that the Clemmer exhibition runs through November the 7th, um, right now, this weekend begins the uh, yesterday we said uh, tomorrow, which is the fifth uh, year that Prospect uh, New Orleans is having their program. Um, what, one of the exhibitions that we're having at this point is um, by uh, photographer Daywood Bay, um, who is showing Louisiana plantations, but from a different uh, point of view, He's showing them uh, as though they're a witness to slavery era violence. So that's a thought-provoking exhibition. There's also an exhibition by George Durow, and also there's one by Josh Kuhn, uh, recalling the 18th century Mexican military band that came to New Orleans in 1884. Uh, at the okay. World Industrial Cotton and Centennial Exhibition. So there's a lot to do this weekend. Absolutely. Thank you. Greg. Yes. Uh, uh, so we're going to open a new exhibit uh, Tuesday, uh, the 26th, 6 to 8 o'clock, um, free and open to the public. We'll have um, music by um, Wendell Brunius and, and Herlin Riley. And the, the exhibit is uh, um, uh, The Soul of Jazz and American Adventure. And this okay. is in collaboration with uh, Disney. They, um, we worked with them on producing an exhibit, this exhibit at Epcot, and now we're the first uh, jazz museum it's going to here in, in the country. And, so. and based on, the, yeah, the movie Soul. The movie, of Great. course, Soul, yes. yes. And, with John Batiste. Yes. yes, with John well, Batiste. tickets are limited, perhaps you'll consider going to the North Shore and celebrating with Cutting Edge Theater because they're presenting their version of Rocky Horror. They're calling it Rocky Horror Voodoo, uh -huh. an original musical in which the film was, was based, of course, with the Rocky Horror Show. Uh -huh. Check out the tickets on Eventbrite. And scary as it is, I'll see you at the theater. All righty, <laughs> thank you. And <laughs> the 26th annual Halloween Boutique will take place Saturday from 11 to 5. That's at the corner of St. Claude and Spain Streets. Local artists have created masks, costumes, and other Halloween accessories for sale. Crew boo hits the streets Saturday night, assembling in Marigny at Elysian Fields uh, near the river. It will go down North Peters to Decatur and the Quarter and beyond. For the entire route, go to crewboo.com. Jam Nola has spookified their space, but is family friendly. Check out Jam Nola. It's 12 room exhibits celebrating the iconic art, music, food, and theatrics of the city through the eyes of over 20 local artists. Go to their website and type in the code BUDAT10 for $10 off of uh, the ticket prices and new exhibits and candy for the kids. So you go to jamnola.com for information. And back to the historic New Orleans collection, by the way. On Wednesday night, you can sign up. It's free, registering for Recollections of a Mad Scientist. This is a tribute to Sid Noel, Morgus the Magnificent. He did a retrospective in 2019. It was videotaped, and they're going to show that. So sign up at hnoc.org for that. Very, very exciting. So great to see you all. Thank you very much for being with us, and thank you, David, for being with us from away. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. Good night. Stepping Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Stepping Out. Please join us in supporting WYES TV. Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Stepping Out on WYES. <laughs>